prod in the back. Sasso, do I look professional? You do. Just want to give a brief intro. My name is Logan Mahoney. Thank you for joining us. First annual recruiting board. Awards, thank you for joining us at Atomic Coffee Roasters. That's my family's second generation business here in Peabody, Mass. Why is a coffee roasting company involved in this whatsoever? My coach football at St. John's Prep, Alex, is a huge supporter. He's become a great friend over the years. And having graduated not too long ago, I'm really not that old, I swear. Just I think what he does kind of for you guys in New England and, you know, our school in particular and just everywhere is, is awesome. People like Alex and local reporters are definitely needed in this area, and he does a great job. So welcome, thank you for coming, and hope you have a great night. Thank you. I, everyone can go home now. <laughs> hey, YouTube family. Welcome back or welcome to Recruiting Board. I'm Alex Agrella, where we are changing the game of high school football and college football in all around New England, but especially here in Massachusetts. So everyone take this time, like, share, and like always, subscribe to the best family here on YouTube. I appreciate everyone for coming. This was really thrown together. I don't want to say last minute we had a little bit of time, but some of you were literally asked very last minute. Like I said, it's the first annual, but first of many. My third fall covering Massachusetts high school football, and I went to over 30 games this year, drove dozens and dozens of hours, hundreds and hundreds of miles, couple oil changes in there as well, and dedicated hundreds and hundreds of hours to editing videos, whatever it may be. But after this season, you know, the games are over, and I was like, well, what do I do now? Plenty more to do here, plenty more work. I had the idea, so I can do an award show, right? I'll just film it, cut it up in my basement, kind of like what I do with my Thursday night shows. It evolved in a little bit more. I call my cousin Jamie. He's a visionary himself. He goes, I got it. We'll get a space. We'll invite the people. We'll get food. And I'm like, I don't know about all that. That sounds like a lot. He says, why not? And Logan, he is the real reason why this was able to happen. So shout out to Atomic Coffee Roasters for donating this space. If we can give another applaud to Logan and Jamie for making this really happen. Before we jump right into the awards, I wanted to give y'all some statistics for this season about what we did as a platform and ultimately what we did for New England. Recruiting board generated 100,000 views on YouTube. This is the one I'm most proud of. 7,968 watch hours from September 1st till today. On Instagram, 760,000 views towards our athletes across the state. So that's something I'm very proud of. There's a lot more where that came from. I would like to thank this video sponsor, and it is from the Midnight Ride. UMass football moved up in 2013 to FBS, and with the rise of NIL, the Midnight Ride is looking to take UMass to the next level and finally get to their first bowl game. The Midnight Ride, believe it or not, raised $125,000 in one week to support UMass football. UMass's fan base consists of 90% of Boston and New York fan bases who don't want to lose. So if you want to donate to the Midnight Ride or contribute to the Midnight Ride, you can go directly to their Twitter account or you can contact Corey Schneider. But thank you to our video sponsors, the Midnight Ride, who are looking to take UMass to that next level, their first bowl game in program history. Without further ado, we will jump right into the awards. For starters, we have our freshman of the year, sponsored by the Midnight Ride. So two people will be receiving this award. Offensive, because there's a specific player out in Western Massachusetts that deserves recognition. I'm trying not to give it away right away. We're trying to leave you to guess a little bit, but it's hard not to talk about who this kid had to fill in for. In the 2022 Super Bowl, everyone asked, Who's going to fill in for Pop Watson? Who's going to fill in for a four-year starter led his team to three Super Bowls for Springfield Central? How about another four-year starter? Spring of 23, Boston College offered an eighth grader from Springfield Central. Jared Stain was launched onto the Massachusetts and New England scene that day. And it's not easy to take over for a legend, but he stepped right in and it was like nothing ever changed because Springfield Central was in title contention again this season. He had a lot of expectation. You know, guys, understand, when you already have an offer going in to your freshman year, a lot of people are going to be wondering how good you are. He played against the teams like Iota. He played against Central Catholic to open up. And he played the eventual state champions, Zavarian, twice. And he was able to throw touchdowns on all of them. And they understand that at 15, 
When you're going to try to take advantage of a young quarterback and give him things defensively you can take advantage, good luck doing that against Jared Stain because his stats prove otherwise. He had 19 touchdowns and over 2,000 all-purpose yards this season as a true freshman. His film shows promising size and arm strength for the next level and accuracy to be developed that Division I programs will desire to look at. It is clear why Boston College offered him before he even took freshman math or had a locker at Springfield Central High School. Right now, we're going to celebrate the start of a promising career. I'm thrilled to announce the 2023 Offensive Freshman of the Year goes to quarterback Jared Stain from Springfield Central High School. <laughs> Defensive Freshman of the Year. And I'm going to tell you this right now. In the MIAA, there is a very few times you see a freshman make the impact the way he did. And I've only seen it happen one time. This is a bold statement, but I'm going to stand by it now. The only time I saw it was Jonel Aguero. You can watch the film and you can argue with me in the comments if you want. But let me read you some of his stats. 70 tackles, 7 sacks, 12 tackles for loss, 3 interceptions, 2 touchdowns, and 2 fumble recoveries. His film, if there's two words that I can describe it, dominant and twitchy for a 15-year-old especially. Coming off the edge is what he's special at, but he can also drop back in coverage. And I asked his coach, Coach Davis, he said it became very clear early in the preseason as a freshman he was going to be competing for a varsity spot. How often do you see that? That hadn't happened at all since I've been here. He's a special player, but he's even a better teammate. The 2023 Recruiting board, defensive freshman of the year, Jake Brogy, Wellesley High School. Jake, obviously you had a tremendous freshman year. Just talk about the impact you were able to make. I feel like uh, I wasn't going to play too much in the beginning of the year. Then some kids got injured and I had to step up. And As a freshman young player, um, I have a senior brother who was on the team who I've always wanted to get playing time with. I feel like I just didn't take any moment for granted. I just took the opportunity and just played my best. You know, and as a freshman, some expectations might not be there. But what do you have to say to the people who are freshmen and you can get varsity playing time? I feel like you always be ready for your moment because it... it it's going to come, and if you didn't play too much at first, there's always, like, the next year and the next rep, and you just shouldn't take anything slow and always just go 100%. Well, I appreciate it. Again, congratulations. You're a hell of a player. There's a college out there that he's going to make very happy for on Saturdays one day. Big man of the year. This was a name, when I put out the poll, it was flooded with this kid's name. I hadn't seen him play live, and then when I did against Milton Academy, I understood why. He was, hands down, one of the most dominant, offensive and defensive linemen. Coach Facillo and the Belmont Hill coaches will tell you, especially at that defensive line position, that's a loaded room. He's one of the guys that just a leader on the team and one of the biggest cornerstone pieces for the reason why Belmont Hill was able to make the turnaround that they did this year. He actually made his college decision today. He's going to Stonehill. I think Stonehill got one of the best linemen in all of New England and he's going to make a lot of you Division One coaches pay for underestimating him and not recruiting him sooner. So I'm I'm very proud to announce that the 2023 Big Man of the Year goes to Belmont Hill senior Pete Fumara. You went through some down years at Belmont Hill, but this year is a huge difference. You know, talk about your leadership and your role on the team. I mean, yeah, I just did everything I could, show the, show the younger guys how to do it, just stay focused, focus on the task at hand, and just keep doing everything you can. I mean, Coach Vasillo was a blessing coming in, led us in the right direction, stayed focused, got done what we had to do. Talk about your Stonehill commitment. Yeah, I'm excited. Like, like you said, I committed earlier today. The whole staff was very welcoming. It seemed like a family. As soon as I stepped on campus, I knew this is this was where I wanted to be, so I fired up to get after it with them. I went on official this past weekend, and uh, I was out for a game against Sacred Heart, which they won in overtime or double overtime in the pouring rain. It was just awesome atmosphere, awesome environment. Like I said, coaches were fantastic. Coach was still used to work there, so felt right. Felt like home, so I'm excited. Yeah, congratulations. 2020 23 big man of the year all right now so obviously i've made a couple jokes we've had a couple laughs tonight which is great it's been great energy but we need to tell you about a story that might have a little bit of a dark side to it but it's a happy one about a comeback and a one about a kid is going to be successful very early on when i followed the chelmsford high school football program i knew they had a special quarterback a guy that led their team to back-to-back -back eight and three seasons into the playoffs right so going into his senior year, Kyle Wilder, one of the leaders of the team, one of the state's most watched quarterbacks, and he was promised to lead Chelmsford 
to another playoff series. However, an injury against Methuen changed that early in the season. What started off as just a swelled leg from a hit ended up being much, much more. The kid toughed it out because that's the type of player he is, the type of kid he is. He's going to go through an injury. He's going to finish the game for his teammates. But it was worse. It ended up being a turf burn. And from the turf burn, there was bacteria that ended up infecting his organs. In short. From there, he ended up having to get airlifted to Boston Children's Hospital and get five surgeries. And at the age of 17 years old, this young man had to ask himself, am I going to die? You know, I can't even imagine having to go through that. But like I said, this is a story about a comeback. It's a story about the success this gentleman's about to endure. After five surgeries and having to ask himself the veracity of that question, he was going to make a comeback and power through it. The doctor said so himself. They were amazed by his recovery. Because of his progress, he was let out much earlier than expected. He always believed and never gave up. And after 11 days in the ICU and six more days recovering at Boston Children's Hospital, he would return home and make it with his seniors for senior night. And while I love football, I know it ends one day for people. Some people it ends in high school, some people it ends in the pros. But the adversity that this kid faced I don't care if you're a millionaire, billionaire, what you do for your nine to five job, everyone can learn from it. To never give up. If you are faced with adverse, you can stare it in the face and you can still make a comeback because his comeback is bigger than ball. And I'm gonna tell you colleges out there that this kid right here, senior captain, National Honor Society member, and if there's one thing we know about him, there's no test that he won't pass and there's no test he can't ace. And you're crazy to not give this kid a spot at your school if he applies. So I'd like to recognize the 2023 Recruiting Board Comeback Player of the Year for his remarkable journey and a story that serves as inspiration for all of us. Kyle Wilder. My brother. Kyle, I you know. I had to hold back emotion just talking about that. Talk about what it's like to be in this moment, though, after the journey you went through. Yeah, I'm definitely grateful to just be here today. You know, it was definitely a scary time. You know, I honestly had no idea what was going on with me. Just a huge thanks to all the doctors and all the support from everyone in Massachusetts and, like, just the communities around. So I'm just very grateful to be here. And talk about what's expected for you afterwards, you know? Because, like I said, Honor Society, what do you want to do now? I, at first, I wanted to go down like the business path, but now I kind of want, I've switched my thoughts and I want to go into the medical field and just because of all the great support I've received throughout my time in the hospital. My family's been the best. My mom stayed with me every night in the hospital right next to me in case I needed anything. And just they came down every day to see me. They would take shifts and meant the world. It was awesome. And then to anyone that might be facing whatever type of adversity it is. You know, at 17 years old, you faced a lot. You know, what would your message be? Just never give up. You know, you just push through. Never give up. Try your best and get through it. Push. You have a message for everyone. You'll write a book one day. You know, guys, 2023 Recruiting Board Comeback Player of the Year. Kyle Wilder. No lie, my heart was racing for that one, y'all. It's an amazing story. That gentleman's been through a lot. His family back there are amazing people. I was so thrilled when you were able to come, and it means the world to me to have him here. So thank you so much to his family for being here. <laughs> the top two-way player of the year. So this is a player. He may come from a smaller school, but I really question your knowledge of Massachusetts high school football if you don't know his name. Let me give you some of his statistics over the past couple of years since he's been a starter. 332 carries for 2,474 yards and 35 touchdowns. 57 catches for 754 yards and six touchdowns. So that's 41 touchdowns and 3,228 yards. Would you believe me if I told you he only played running back for two years of high school? He was an H-back his sophomore year. His defensive stats, which are just as impressive, 202 tackles, 29 tackles for loss as a linebacker, 11 sacks, one interception, one fumble recovery. He was a huge reason why his team was able to go back to back this year and make it actually to their third straight Super Bowl. His coaches describe him as a special type of player, a throwback. And the thing about this kid on the biggest stage, that's when he plays his best. In the Super Bowl this year, he rushed for 275 yards and five touchdowns. I asked coach Chris Landolfi what it was like playing against him. He said, if I had to make an all-star team out of every player I've faced over the years I've coached, it would start with him. 
he would be my first pick. He's going off to Bentley. He's going to be a great player over there. And I remember thinking, whoever gets that kid, he's going to be a captain one day. He's going to make a lot of tackles one day. The 2023 Recruiting Board Two-Way Player of the Year, Alex Barlow, Duxbury High School. <laughs> Duxbury wasn't down the street, so I didn't invite him. If you guys hit traffic, he would have hit a lot. Alex Barlow, congratulations. Offensive Player of the Year. So we have two. These will be broken down into the NEPSAC and the MIAA. The first. So immediately when this kid came into the ISL, his impact was felt. And that's both literally and metaphorically. Because if you were a linebacker, you were going to meet him in the hole. If you try to tackle him too high, if you're a DB, it's not going to work out. He was very pivotal in uh, Jeff Moore's first year as a head coach. That's going to give it away to some of you. 2026 six rushing yards, 327 receiving yards, an impressive 32 touchdowns in only nine games. That's almost four a game that this kid averaged, including in one game where he scored seven. And I'll tell you, the ISL schools really didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare for him. He announced he was coming there in August. And this is just the long list of accolades he's already gotten. He's already gotten the NEPSAC Class B Offensive Player of the Year. But here's another one. So the Recruiting Board Offensive Player of the Year for the NEPSAC, Hugo DeGemin from Tabor Academy. Offensive player of the year for the MIAA. This player, somebody that not a lot of people might have known about before this season, unless you, you played in the Bay State. 61 catches, 14 touchdown receptions, two kick returns for touchdowns, and one interception. Yards, he had a lot of them. 2,000 all-purpose between special teams and receiving. And those aren't video game numbers either, y'all. And beyond the statistics, his leadership played a very pivotal role in propelling his team to a state championship game, their first in a while. And the coaches I spoke to him, especially through the survey, all said, if you weren't game planning around him during the season, all of a sudden, he breaks free and the band plays. So I asked his head coach about him. He said, the people don't see the work he puts in the offseason. He doesn't just show up for football in the fall. This is a kid who does seven on sevens in the winter and spring. He's playing basketball to work on his agility and his, and his jumping. He's always running routes at the high school, always lifting, and consistently working to get better. And it clearly shows because of the progression he made from his junior to his senior year. And if there's one play I had to highlight for him, if you go watch his, the game against Milford High School in the playoffs, he took a five-yard, broke four tackles, and goes 80 yards for a touchdown. Week after week, he proved he's one of the best players in the state. Numerous all-conference awards, but this award for the 2023 Offensive Player of the Year for the MIA goes to Hamal Abdal Kalak from Walpole High School. <laughs> Defensive Player of the Year. So again, it will be broken down to the uh, NEPSAC in the MIAA. We'll start with NEPSAC. This was a player who, if there's any word I can use for him, it's production. And Coach Facilla will tell you. He even said so himself. He was one of his favorite players to coach against. He was the heart and soul of Lawrence Academy. Mark Martin, shout out to Mark Tyler Martin's dad. He actually said, and I quote, in 2021, his sophomore year, there were a lot of power five guys at Lawrence Academy. The Reynolds brothers, Reagan, who's at BC, Ty Chan at Notre Dame, Ryan Puglisi, who's going to Georgia. However, the best player for Lawrence Academy that day was 5'10", 185 pound, Mikey Gregg. Gregoire. Gregoire finished this year with over 15 tackles for loss, 70 tackles in total. If I had to bet, he's a guy who was leading all of the ISL, definitely in the top five. It is a big component in this game with size. But sometimes you just got to turn on the film. Is this kid a football player or is he not a football player? And if I had to pick a defense, I would start with Mikey Gregoire Jr. As a leader on campus, you know, he lives with the freshmen. He helps them transition from living away from home for their first years, plans on doing a post-grad year. So the 2023 Recruiting Board NEPSAC Defensive Player of the Year is Mikey Gregoire Jr., Lawrence Academy. Now for the MIAA. So this is a guy who, again, production and leadership is a big key with him. A guy who's very soft-spoken, but if you go watch the St. John's prep teams over these past couple of years, they've had a lot of great defensive players. Mikey Naboo, who's at Columbia now. Of course, you got Jonel. Jesse O'Fury, who's at Rutgers. However, Mason McSweeney, who's been their defensive end anchor these past couple of years. He finished this season with 15 sacks and 18 tackles for loss. And as a coach, how isn't that fun to take a defensive end? You can put his hand in the dirt. You can have him stand up. You can have him play by coverage 
put him, drop him back a little bit at DN. And he's six foot two, 232 pound freak. He's been disruptive as since he was a sophomore. And that's for sure. And if you're playing as a sophomore over at the prep, you're definitely doing something right. Playing against some of the toughest competition week in and week out. And I think it shows, you know, this past week, Mason's gotten offers from URI and Merrimack. And I think that the, there's going to be more coming. And we're very excited to give our 2023 Recruiting Board Defensive Player of the Year to Mason McSweeney. Who can get me water? Oh, wait. No, actually, it's a plug. This advertisement is sponsored by Atomic Coffee Roasters. It is cold. It's about to be January. You got to be bundled up. You got to be warm. Go get you some Atomic Coffee Roasters. Again, it's going to take a little bit of a, a little bit of a turn here, but it's going to be a pick me up as well. This award that I'm going to be giving out is called the James Galante Eye Test Award. And what do I mean by that? And I'll give you the context. Everyone knows that in football, there's the eye test. When a kid walks into the room if you're six foot three you're just gonna stand out right but like i was saying earlier do you have that dog in you do you have what it takes to be a successful football player james galante from marblehead high school embodied what it meant to be undersized but a hell of a player he was a cornerback on their state championship winning team in 2021 he went 20 and 0 as a starter for them won a state championship game and that was the last time james would ever see a football field unfortunately because he tragically lost his life only days after committing to Denison University to go play football and continue his dreams and study the physics. It was very crushing for the Marblehead community, where everyone rallied around his family. They raised all sorts of money to start a scholarship fund. While James, just to describe him the few times I saw him, it did not matter if he was playing Ronan Hannafin, who's at Clemson now, at a seven on seven, or Tyler McMahon, a six foot four tight end from Masco. James might have been five seven. He was gonna give you all he had. He was gonna fight to the last nail. He's gonna not gonna let you catch that ball. So we had to find a kid who was gonna fight every single yard, who was gonna be that guy to never back down. Not not only that, but was he a guy that meant a lot to his community, that gave back to it? Because James meant so much to his community. I couldn't think of anyone better than one of the state's best running backs this year. And if you've been paying attention to high school football, Tate Hoffmeister was a name you should have heard plenty about. Because this season, his senior year, he had 1,800 rushing yards, 2,000 in total after the kick returns and receiving, 24 touchdowns in total. And in his high school career with a win over rival Wellesley, sorry, Brogy, where he rushed for 230. 35 yards and three touchdowns. Trinity coaches explain him like this. He's built like Pac-Man. Small and compact. If you underestimate him, you're going to get run over. Like James, though, was maybe not what, what you look at when you think of size, but it doesn't matter. You turn on the film, he's going to make something special happen. He's going to Trinity next year. He's going to be scoring a lot of touchdowns for them. I think they got a huge steal. Just to rip back to the community, this kid was a third generation at his high school. He had a lot of pressure. In the days of people leaving high schools and stuff, he stayed. He ended up making in his own name for himself. I'm very proud to announce that the 2023 James Galante Eye Test Award winner is Tate Hoffmeister from Needham High School. My oh, brother. I'll stay right there. As I said, that the Galante started the MHS 19 fund. They raised a lot of money over these past couple years, and they donate scholarships to seniors that are going to go play college football. On behalf of MHS 19, for your next year at Trinity, the Galantes would like to give you $1,000. Wow. Thank you. Great. Tay, obviously you were huge for the Needham team this year. Can you just talk about the impact you were able to make? Yeah, it was great. You know, I think as a leader of the team, me and Jake Reiser, my fellow captain, we really took that role as like leaders to the team, being role models to the younger guys. And I think we kind of brought back the culture of Needham football that's kind of been at lack for the past couple of years. As you said, we hadn't made the playoffs for so long. And I think bringing that family aspect back to the team was amazing. And I think the production that I had came from all my other teammates. You know, it wasn't only me. They provided the opportunity for me to produce on the field. So, I mean, I'm so thankful for them. You're going to training next year. Do so you want to talk about that? I'm so excited for that. So glad to be playing at the next level, you know. As you said, that not a lot of people are able to put the pads on again after high school. I mean, football is one of my favorite things in the world. I can't wait to be a part of the Trinity team. I'm so excited for it. I think they're a great program, great coaches, and I'm so glad to be a part of it. Good news. I think your uh, first semester of books may have been bought. Thank you so much, brother. We are here with Jimmy Galante, the founder of MHS 19. Jimmy, thank you so much for being here today. No, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. And, you know, I had a chance to 
uh, take a look at uh, Tate um, Hoffmeister's uh, highlights. It's evident right away that he possessed the same grit and determination as my son James did. James Galante, my son, tragically passed away on uh, March 18th of uh, 2022. James was 5'7", 160 something pounds, committed to Denison University. He was a great football player. He was 20-0 and as a starter with Marblehead High School. They won the Division Three state championship in 2021. Tate, you know, possessed those same attributes. So the kind of kids that play college football, we're just really excited to present a scholarship uh, to him today for $1,000. Hopefully we can grow that over the years to come. We got a Wellesley and Needham kid here, though. So well, at least we got a few Mars separating them. So nothing's going to go down. We're going to go into our Coaches of the Year. So we have two. So we'll start with the one from the MIAA first. There were a lot of coaches in the MIAA that were nominated for this award and there's a lot that could have won this award. You know Al Ferrano has had a great year. Matt Blood a tremendous coach out of Uxbridge. You know Steve Dombowski one of the only coaches to win two uh, state championships at two high schools. This goes to a coach who I can promise you has probably never seen a recruiting board video ever. He'll definitely see this one and he probably will be like who is Alex Segrella when I give him this award. To me with how his team played week in and week out and how they dominated week in week out it is very hard to did not give him this award. This year, his team went 13 and 0 and outscored their opponents 429 and only allowed 106 points this year. 14 of those were in late in a playoff game, by the way, with the backup set. Five of his players made the all-conference team this year, which if you know the Hockamock League, it is one of the hardest to win in. And right now, he is the king of the Hockamock. No pun intended, if you get it already. Somebody did. Coach Brian Lee from King Phillip. So it's worth noting that right now I'm just talking about a couple stats from this season but the success that KP has had goes beyond these past couple seasons as he just got his 150th win this year he's been able to instill a championship culture I asked a couple players about what it was like playing for him and Danny Salveria said as a player who played under coach Lee for four years he always had three main goals to stay as consistent win create a brotherhood and teach valuable life lessons we'll never forget his man cares about every single player and treats kids like his family he takes so much pride in the program and he make sure we have pride in the program that he shares and I can't thank him enough for the player and what he's made me into today. Mason Campbell echoed this statement. He created a brotherhood that's unmatched and it was so powerful throughout the season. His pregame speeches fed us anger and the fire we needed to dominate week in and week out. In the 6 a.m. workouts they taught me life lessons I'll never forget. King Phillip is one of the premier programs in the state and I want to give the 2023 MIAA Coach of the Year Award to Brian Lee from King Phillip. That uh, was kind of a long drive from Rentham. But we do have one of the Coach of the Years in the house today. Anyone that knows the NEPSAC knows that this award was pretty much already determined before I even sent it out. I'll give you a little bit of backstory. I've been covering football for now three years, and Belmont Hill at that time was not a winning football program. And we'll get into this later. Primarily, it was known as a uh, hockey and lacrosse school. Going in 2022, they went three and five. In 21, they went one and seven. And before the 23 season, the expectations weren't really high for them. I was talking about the Lawrence Academies, the BBNNs. I was focusing on the arrival of Jeff Moore at Tabor. And nobody was talking about Belmont Hill. Enter Coach Vasilla who changed everything. That program, after a tough loss to Milt Lawrence Academy, rallied and went on an undefeated streak for the rest of the remainder of the regular season, clinching the ISL title outright and made their first bowl game since 2018. And what makes Facillo's achievement even more commendable, and I want to really outline this, all the players on that team, and Fumara, you can vouch, they were already been there. He didn't have enough time to bring in guys. What he did was he made the players on the team better. He got the needle pointed in the right direction. He didn't have to come in and bring in all these guys. He said, what can I do here and win here today? And in the days, especially of college and the transfer portals, people leaving and stuff, here's a guy who did it the right way and did it with the kids already at his school. In the transformation of Belmont Hill from being a 1-7 and seven and a 3-5 and five team, those days are long gone because the young and bright coaching career of Anthony Vasil has just started. And I'll tell you this, Belmont Hill in 2023 is a football school. That is for darn certain, especially while he is there. I've done enough talking. The 2023 NEPSAC Coach of the Year, Anthony Facillo, Belmont Hill. Brother. Coach, like I said, it, it wasn't close. All your friends, you know, they were calling me. They said, you know who's going to win it, right? Like, and we laugh, but 
it really is a testament of what you were able to do this season. So can we just talk about that? I think it's more of a testament to what are the kids was that were able to do. I think um, I came in with the right pieces. The pieces just needed to be put in the right place. I was very fortunate to have a great assistant coaching staff that was already in place. So I just added a few little pieces in there. But guys like Pete and the senior class, you know, really got together and really led this group throughout the summer. And, you know, we lost our first game. And I tell people all the time, it's the best thing that happened to our program, just to learn from that through the adversity of that, what it meant to lose, what it felt like. And then the guys just really took it from there. So really just a test to them and, and the work that they put in our program. Because like you said, this is the football school now. And you've created, be able to change that culture. You know, it was a big jump for me, I guess, from the college level. You know, I had first time being in a high school and, you know, kind of learning that way. And first time being in a private school, a public school from kid from Winter Mass. And, you know, so getting accustomed to that a little bit, but just kind of knew, you know, the football's football. And it doesn't matter if it's the high school level or Division One level. I mean, all the things got to be put in the right places. The kids got to work hard, do that stuff. But I didn't put any helmets on this year. I didn't lift any weights. They did. They all did it. So it's just really a test to the kids at Belmont Hill. And, you know, you keep saying that we haven't brought anyone in and all that stuff, but uh, we're looking out there. So if anyone uh, <laughs> would love to replace Pete and, you know, guys up front. So, you know, I think that's the culture of our program is that we want to keep this winning thing going. Like you said, you know, Belmont Hill is football school and it was at one point and we just brought it back. Since you said his name, you know, talk about Pete. You know, Pete's a great story because, you know, we laugh. We weren't even ready for his, his signing day ceremony because things were happening so fast for him. You know, a lot of guys get a lot of accolades in their junior or sophomore year and start to get offers. You know, Pete was, you know, a guy that actually wrote in his entrance meeting when I first met him that, you know, he felt like he was snubbed in all ISL in 2022. And, you know, he was a kid that just worked for it. And every day I walked down there, he was in the weight room with his brother or someone else and working at it. And all summer, he took the reins of you know, leading the offense of line and our, our line was the reason why we won this year we were able to run the ball throughout the whole season and they stayed healthy and were tough and Pete was the leader of that group and I'm so happy for him to continue his football career and I think Stonehill is a great place for him the 2023 coach of the year coach Vasilla. my man thank you brother thank you. Now we got our two Massachusetts player of the year again sponsored by the midnight ride Nepsack and MIA, of course. And both these guys honestly got a ton of outpouring support from the entire state of Massachusetts. The first, we'll start with the NEPSEC. I made a very bold statement in October that I thought the Gatorade Player of the Year was already a runaway. His numbers, his junior year, 1,765 yards, 28 touchdowns, and he even threw a touchdown this year. 31 total, all combined, it was 2,000 yards. Not to mention he's a hell of a defensive player as well. 52 tackles, one interception, one forced fumble. Each year, he's gotten consistently better, you know? And as a freshman, you watch him, you go, oh, how, how much better can he get? Every year, he just keeps surpassing it. And my good friend Adam Kirkshan was saying, he goes, I think the thing I love about him is how complete he is. He's got the speed, and he's always falling forward, no matter who he's playing, no matter how big a tackler is, anyone that's playing in the ISL knows he's going to get the ball when you're playing BBNN. It's just, can you stop him? Nepsack, Massachusetts Player of the Year is Bo McCormick from Buckingham, Brown, and Nichols. MIAA now. This was a guy who, honestly, it wasn't really close. And I think everybody knows who I'm about to say. Guys who have played against him, Tate, you did. And he's representing New England on a national stage. And, you know, when you're already a Power 5 prospect, again, people's eyes are going to be on you. People are going to want to see you succeed and fail. But imagine being that and your dad is a former NFL quarterback for 13 years, an all-pro quarterback at that. Henry Hasselbeck, going into his junior year, he had just transferred in from Belmont Hill. He really didn't know anybody. It was kind of a late transfer. And everybody's already asking, how good is this kid? He's Matt Hasselbeck's son. Is he that good? And plenty of people ask me that. So I went to a scrimmage, and the first things I'm getting is, hey, how do you do? How does he, how's he throwing? There was nobody, I think, that made a bigger jump from his junior year to his senior year than Henry Hasselbeck. He finished his senior year with 114 completions, 1,412 yards, and 20 touchdowns through the air, 871 on the ground, an additional 12 touchdowns. 17 and six as a starter. Obviously, he won a state championship this year. And right away, he's just one of those guys. He's bigger than most kids he plays at the high school level. He's a physical runner. And people forget, he's a hell of a lacrosse player. He was a division one lacrosse commit before he decided to give football a go. And like I said, he developed as a passer a ton going into his senior year. Watched him play four times his junior year, 
four times his senior year. And he will tell you himself, though, the biggest reason why he was able to be a, a better player this year is because he was able to step into a leadership role. He became more comfortable around his teammates. He was able to get more comfortable calling plays. And the coaches saw it in practice that they were able to let him rip the ball more. And if trying to get Al Ferrano to throw the football, that's very difficult. Defining moment for him going into the Thanksgiving game. Everybody's saying, well, Prep and Zavarian are playing in the Super Bowl. I know that must be a JV game. They're not going to take Thanksgiving seriously. Why would they do that? Henry Hasselbeck broke his nose that game on Thanksgiving. You want to tell me it didn't mean anything to him? He broke his nose, stays in the game, wins the game. You tell me that's not the leadership you don't want your quarterback to have and the toughness you don't want your quarterback to have. Very excited to be giving it to him. Oh, he signed with UCLA today. I don't know if you heard. So the 2023 MIAA Massachusetts Player of the Year goes to Henry Hasselbeck. those are the awards. I appreciate everyone for being here. You guys made it all very special. And I promise you, this is going to be the first of many. That's for darn certain. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I hope you all did too. I'd like to get some pictures with some of y'all afterwards if you could stay a few minutes. Thank you.